Good morning, everyone. It's Lee here. God bless you. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Uh, today on the show, I have Dana Emmanuel, and today we'll be talking to her about um, ghost hunting. This was something that she did in the past before she came to Christ. So we'll be looking into that. I'll be doing a few shows with Dana, so we'll have various topics to look into. Of course, it's all about Jesus and how we get from coming out of New Age and occult practices to Jesus. So stay with us for the show. Thanks. So hello, Dana. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm, how are you doing, Lee? Yeah, really good. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you so much yeah. for coming on the show. It's great to have you. Thank you. It's great to be here. I'm yeah. honored. Oh, excellent. Now, I just briefly told the viewers that you were doing ghost hunting. And you're going to share a little bit about that with us today. But before we get into that, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you live and things like that? Well, I live in central Florida. Um, I live in a city, Coco. It's a small city. Um, and I live right over by NASA, which wow. is uh, almost, actually, I'm very close to where Joe Jordan lives or lived. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, and um, I even worked out there by where he worked too. <laughs> and my brother worked at his, uh, the Sea Ray also where he worked. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of weird. It's like we were, you know, right around each other and didn't know it. But, but anyway, um, yes, I live in central Florida and I, I, right now I take care of my 13 year old grandson and I live with my mother and she is total care. So um, that's what I do. I just take care of her. Fantastic. So, and I minister, and I minister to people, you know, about this deception with the paranormal and the occult. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And I heard you do a bit of deliverance as well. Yes, I do. Um, yes, I pray with people, um, you know, for my videos and things like that. And just word of mouth, I, I've had people call me and I, I, um, I do do, you know, pray deliverance with people. And, um, and follow up, you know, as yeah. well. So excellent. That's I think great. that's really important. It yeah, is. thanks. It is. Um, yeah. So you did ghost hunting. Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah. Um, when did you I got start? into it after I, uh, well, what happened was I was, I was interested in the paranormal growing up, you know, um, it was just a matter of just watching the, the scary movies and stuff like that. And, then my, um, you know, when girls would come over and stay the night, we would do things like the Mary Mary, you know, and all that in the mirror and things like that. And uh, nothing really, mm, like nothing really happened. Yeah. But so it was it's... just that thrill thinking it might happen. Yeah. Uh, but after, after everything and after I did come out of the, I, and I hate to go fast forward like this, but after I came out of it and everything, my mom had told me, she said that when I was younger, probably about the age of five, I asked her, it, no, it had to be older than that. I'm sorry. It had to be older than that. I don't know. I can't remember. That's but anyway, okay. I was young. I was yeah. young. And she said that I came to her and asked her, I said, do you sometimes when you're walking, do you walk above yourself and watch yourself walk down the road? Oh. And my mom said, No. And I told her, I said, I, I can do that, you know, so Evan and I, and when she told me that I literally had the vision of when I did that, I, I, but it's like some kind of repressed memories about it. I know what it is, but I, I don't know what exactly mm -hmm. uh, happened. You know, I know mm -hmm. that there's things that happened, but I'm not sure exactly what happened, but, but anyway, yes. Yeah, so then um, I moved in with my grandmother. She had Alzheimer's and uh, it was also, it was total care, and uh, so. But when I moved into her house, my grandfather had had passed away like 15 years prior to this. So the it was a rumor that the house was haunted, that Granddaddy was watching over Grandma. I just kind of you know yeah okay that's a cool you know a neat story you know I just but I didn't believe it you know so but as as we you know when we were living there uh, we started hearing noises. And right. it was like, literally like somebody walking up and down the hallway mm -hmm. and we would, every time we get up and check, the kids were in bed asleep. It was nobody. So 
she had a little music box. It was like a rose inside of it, a glass one. And it would play music. That's and, creepy. Um, it would do that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, we. I so creepy. Home, I could just hear that music work. now. Yeah. My, like my husband at work, the kids at school. And I just go down the hallway, go to the bathroom. I'm hearing music. And I'm like, yeah, my, my grandmother was in a fetal position. She, her legs were restricted, you know, constricted. So right. she couldn't get up. There was no way it was her, you know. And uh, so there was things like that happened. Yes. And it was so creepy. I mean, even though. I had an interest in the paranormal, you know, you kind of get like scared when things like that happen. It's like, oh man, you know, cause you don't know what it is, you know, it could be demonic, you never know. But after that happened, um, one night we was laying in bed and we would hear noises like in the kitchen and it was just like somebody was up getting something to eat, moving things around, opening cabinets. I mean, it was literally like somebody was up in there preparing yeah. something to eat or something. Gosh. And, um, so there was nights that we would hear that nobody would be up. We'd check nobody would be up. So then one night, well, where our, be our bedroom was, it was directly right next to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And there was glass doors that separated our room and the kitchen. And what it was, was at nighttime, you know, we would open that door because of the air conditioner. So we, op we would open the door. Well, that's why we could hear it so much, you know, in the kitchen, the noises. Yeah. So one night I was, the noises got, it was loud and it woke me up, but I didn't open my eyes right away. And I kept hearing it and I thought, oh man. So right away I'm like, I'm like, I want to open my eyes and catch what this is. I, but I was scared to, you know, I, I just, I had a feeling, you, you know, when something's around, you feel that yeah. darkness, you feel it as something not right, you know? You can feel it. Mm. Yeah. So then I was, I was laying there and, and I heard it. And, and just as I was opening my eyes to focus on what, what it was, the chair, the kitchen chair moved and <gasps> scooted across the floor. I mean, it literally just scooted. And I'm like, holy, <laughs> I mean, I ran out the side door oh. and I, and as I jumped out of the bed, my husband got up and I was yelling. I said, I said, oh, we're moving out of here. <laughs> I, mean, was, I mean, that there is to see something like that, you know, it's like, gosh, if something like that can move around you know, what else can happen, you know, exactly. can something hit us or, you know, it yeah. can be physical, you know? Yeah. So after that happened, my, and my husband, we were outside and he finally talked me into coming back inside. He was like, he was like, you know, reassuring me. He's like, it's just some granddaddy, you know, he's, it's just him looking after your grandma, you know, evidently what it, whatever it is, it's not harming mm -hmm. us, you know, so it's probably him. So this, I mean, this, this is and, one of the things people think, isn't it? That it's a yeah, spirit of yeah. a dead loved one or something yes. and everything's yes. okay, but uh, yeah. that's not the yep. truth, is it? That's right. And you know, at this time, I, I really should mention that all my life, as far as I can remember, I went to church. Mm. So I was going to church, but you know, when that happened, uh, I didn't know what it was that scared me and everything, but I still thought it, I did think it was grandpa, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was like, you would think that I, and I didn't know anything about, yeah. you know, saying leave in the name of J. I didn't, I didn't even think yeah. of that, you know, Dana, that was not even, you know, just a yeah. question. You said you went to church all that time. Did your church yeah. ever teach that those spirits, uh, did they ever teach anything on that topic? No, not at all. The only thing mm. that we, I ever heard was when you die, you either go to heaven or hell. That's right. all I ever heard. Well, then when this happened with my grandfather, my experience proved to me that the Bible wasn't true, that it had errors because right. I was thinking, well, wait a minute, you know, if that's grandpa, why is he not in heaven? You know, and I'm thinking, mm, well, the Bible must have some errors in it. So and then I thought, well, how else can I find out the truth? And I thought, well, I'm going to have to inquire of the spirits, you know? So I thought, well, mm -hmm. I'll just start learning, you know, I'll just somehow try to start communicating with them, you yeah. know? And that's when the whole thing come in where I wanted to go start doing ghost hunts. And it was just a matter of going to like the local graveyards, um, you know, stuff like that, that, that was rumored to be haunted. And yeah, the first the first night was the we had an eye opening experience there, you know. Wow, but, gosh. Um, yeah. So, so did did the episodes in 
your house that you thought was your granddad did they just yeah. stop or did it continue well you know what we still heard noises we still heard things happening nothing like that mm -hmm. that was the last time that anything like that happened you know at that at that house at that house yeah. um you know uh later on you know things got really bad but yeah at that house no and my my grandmother passed away um we had moved into and we bought our own house you know so um after that that's when i had more time mm -hmm. to go you know do do my ghost hunts and paranormal investigations so. wow yeah it's interesting um uh, my grandmother used to do seances in her home she'd invite her oh. friends over and oh, wow. I was just a child I was perhaps four around about four I wasn't at school yet because I remember she used to babysit me and um, where she would do the seance I felt horrible in that room I was scared I would run out of it because wow. I, I felt something and mm -hmm. years later there was an experience i stayed overnight and a big white ball of light came uh to the bedroom i was sleeping in and it was just floating outside the bedroom and i was so scared oh wow so wow. scared and i was screaming out for people yeah. to come and no one yeah. could hear me it was like being in a, a, a zone, just me and this thing, it was horrible. Oh, no. Um, yeah, but she yeah. also had footsteps that you could hear walking up and down the corridor. Wow. And, um, <laughs> and, and she had, uh, one time she went away and she came back and every single cupboard in the kitchen was open. And, of course, nobody oh, had, wow. had broken in the house. Um, it's yeah, we had, we had similar happen. Were open. Yeah. So yeah, not good yeah. in that kitchen. We would find in that kitchen at, we, I was talking about, we would find things out. Like you said, the cupboards would be open yeah. and nobody had been in there, you know, and that's why we knew something was happening in that kitchen, you know, mm. but, uh, and I kept thinking, my goodness, I mean, you know, I don't never catch it happening. You know, we would hear it and it, you know, at night, but then it would stop, you know, as soon yeah. as we'd wake up and look around, it would stop. Mm. so uh mm. that was weird too because it was like why you know i didn't understand that either afterwards i was like i don't understand but you know what is really weird that i did not even realize at the time that this happened didn't even realize afterwards until i told my testimony a couple of times and it hit me mm. <laughs> but my grandfather died in the kitchen at the kitchen table yeah. and he fell over off the chair Wow. So, I mean, it was just like, some, the, you know, it wanted to show me that it was grandpa by yes. showing these signs, you know? Yeah. That's and, what uh, they want you to think. Yes. Yeah. Because they know, um, they know what happened, you know, yeah. they want to show you. And, and when you see, oh, wow, that had to be him. You feel like, okay, that reinforces and it makes you believe that it's proof that it yeah. was him. They're, you know? they're, they're and, uh, very good at deception. And yes. You yes. know, the devil's a liar and they trick yes, you. He is. So that's why yes. we have to be yes. uh, reading the Bible and and getting yeah. to know the truth. Um, there is a verse here. Um, yeah. And Jesus answered them, you are deceived because you do not know the scriptures. That's Matthew 22, 29. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yes. So if, you, if, if we know the scriptures we can see the truth and we can use that as our uh, compass. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And you know what is um, when I, after this incident and I thought, okay, well, the Bible must have errors in it, you know, um, as I was through my years of this doing paranormal investigations, my bro, well, both of my brothers actually um, would warn me, you know, mm -hmm. and one of them told me, said, Dana, don't you know that these things that you're communicating with and stuff are demons? They're not ghosts. And he said, when we die, we go to heaven or hell. Mm. And I was like, well, you know, I mean, I don't, you know, you know, and I would tell him about my experiences, you know, and he said, I don't care. You know, that's what the Bible says. And I'm like, I just didn't believe that. I kept thinking, you know, maybe it was wrong. Maybe it was just, you know, you, you hear it all the time. People say, well, the Bible is just man-made and it's, 
you know, men wrote it and stuff like that. They don't mm. realize that, uh, you know, that it is inspired by God and holy yeah. men was moved, you know, by and, the Holy Spirit and, to write it. And not to mention the, the large number of uh, prophecy that has come true, which actually yeah. proves that the real yes. word is true, you know? Yes, yes. And that book, what is it, uh, Lee Strobel? I think it is a case for Christ. Right. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <That's a> good <laughs> one. Yeah. And yeah. and he um he didn't believe the Bible and he set out to prove it uh was wrong oh. or or fake. And in turn oh. he, he read it and he got convicted and he got saved. Isn't that so, something? Isn't yeah. it that was amazing. Yeah. I love the show. That was a you know, there was a show about that, wasn't it? I mean I I'd seen it on TV. It was some kind of a Yeah, I think it was I can't a movie. remember what it was called. He's got a book yeah, and yeah. I'm sure he it had a movie good. because I'm sure I've watched yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. It was but, very um, good. It's happened to quite a few yeah. people. They've set out to uh prove it wrong, but in turn they yeah. end up being believers. <laughs> Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So yes. tell us what happens next in your story. Well, I started, I, the first um, investigation we went on was at a graveyard. And while we were there, we got a picture and it was of a, an apparition. Mm -hmm. And this apparition was clothed in KKK attire. It was like right. a long flowing gown with the cone shaped hood. Wow. And then you could see three very distinct. It wasn't like the little dust orbs like you see. You know the difference when you do investigations. You know, I'm sure you do, you yeah. know. But um, but this was definitely spiritual. It was a couple of those orbs behind this this spirit mm -hmm. too. And um, we've seen that. And then the very first grave that I stood at was at the beginning. It was at the front of the graveyard. And it was a great big tombstone. And I thought, oh, okay. So we went there. That was the first one. I stood there and I was asking questions. Um, what is your name? And on the, the audio recorder, it, I got Frank. And I did not hear it until I got home and I analyzed it, you know, listened to it. And I heard it say Frank. And I was like, oh, wow, I've got to go back there to see. But, you know, so me and my daughter went the next day and went to that grave. And sure enough, it said Frank. It was Frank right. so-and-so. And I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, this was just reinforcing, you know, everything that I was learning. And I, yeah. it's just like the devil does that to try to, to uh, you know, it's almost like planting seeds sort of, you know. Yeah. And these, these doubt, familiar you know? spirits are always watching us. Yeah. And so they know what the next move is going to be. And yes. They, yes. they throw these things to deceive us and just yes. to. That's right. Reel us in. That's it's right. like fishing, you know, just reel us in. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yep. So I started after that. I, I got more serious about it and I started getting my research equipment, you know, the little the gadgets, you know, the EMF meters and all that stuff, you know. Mm. Um, so I was getting that stuff and, and it was at first it was just me and my older kids. And which is, you know, that's horrible. And I thinking back, I'm like, oh my gosh, I had my kids involved, you know. Uh, I, I just to think of it, you know, it's like, oh, wow. Well. <laughs> yeah. But of course, yeah. um, they know now, you know, cause I, after everything we went through, after all this, they learned just like I did, <laughs> mm, you know, but, um, yeah. Yeah. So after I started, um, you know, doing these investigations, I was showing people pictures, you know, and things like that at work or, you know, uh, just people I knew personally. And, um, it was weird, but I started getting people asking me to come to their homes, you know, and, and help them because they were, you know, they were, they had spirits in their homes and stuff. And the weird thing about it is I was even a couple people from my church, you know, so, what? yeah, so it, I know a couple of people at my church, they're like, they had spirits and, and one of them, you know, there was a suicide and one of the, uh, one of the people's sister, I think it was committed suicide. And uh, mm -hmm. she didn't know if it was a suicide or if it was just a, an overdose. Mm -hmm. So they asked me to go to the home to see if I can get answers, you know, and, uh, oh boy, that was, a, that was another one that we had a lot of stuff happening there. But, um, but anyway, and, and along with a couple of people asking me from church, 
I wasn't hearing nothing at church that contradicted this, what I was doing. So I really didn't think it was wrong. I just thought that I was just an average person, Mm -hmm. you know, a Christian Mm -hmm. going around and, and asking questions. And I, you know, I really just thought that the Bible had errors and I wanted answers, you know, but um, I just, and, and like I said, I was getting the answers I was getting, you know, was contrary to scripture and the devil was leading me astray, yeah. you know, so uh, it was something. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so, for being so transparent and sharing the story yeah. because I really yeah. uh, want people to listen in the hopes that they can come to the understanding yeah. that we shouldn't be messing with this stuff. And by listening yes. to the story and you're being very transparent, sharing that, um, yeah. I, I, I think that's a good thing. Um, yes. Thanks. For and, and I also want to say, if it's okay, um, I want to tell people that by me telling this, my testimony, um, I, I include some of the things that happened just to show how I was becoming deceived and what happened and what led to my coming to to the realization of what these things really were. It's not because I, I enjoy it. You know, I have totally repented of all this occult practices I was doing Mm. and have done a hundred degree turn. I mean, seriously. And I, so I want people to know that I really do because, you know, um, I just don't want it to come off as that, you know, you know, that I think, I get a thrill out of it. I don't. Mm. So, um, well, but it's, that's the way it was back then. Yeah, you know, it's, it's the same for so. me. My my past is um, new age with occult things in there, like yeah. Reiki, and um, you know, yeah. I think I did uh, seance when I was about fifteen or something with a, a girlfriend and and her mother. Believe oh, it or wow. not. Um, yeah, and these things we do we just think it's yeah. it's a bit of fun or you know see what yes. happens mentality but yeah um it it yeah. just gets you because because we never get our answers it's always a curio- curiosity um we're yeah. always searching for the answers but they they just keep leading to more and more yes uh, yes, like throwing out bait. Yes, <laughs> really. yes, you're right. It really, absolutely, is. It's just like a, a a rabbit trail almost. You know, but yeah. uh, you're right. You're right. Yeah. But I just yeah. after that, I just started. Um, you know, I actually joined a team after that. Um, a local team. I seen an ad. It was like on Craigslist, I think it was, and uh, yeah. looking for someone to join their team, and I did. So I did, I investigated with them for a while. We went to um, Casadega Spiritualist Camp. So, and you know, what you mentioned again about the new age and a little bit of Reiki, you know, all these things. Yeah. I never at the time, and I'm sure that you would probably be the same. I never identified myself as new age back then. I I, never identified myself as a spiritualist. mm -hmm. I never identified myself as a, a psychic. I never identified myself as any of these things. It was just, I was right. curious mm-hmm. and I fell into all of these things, you know, on the, you know, through all this, you know, and, um, but I can look back and say, wow, <laughs> because I did things that a witch would do. I did things that a Wiccan would, do. you know, I did things that all these really, these, uh, yeah. you know, things would do. And Dana, so, did you find that when you started one thing, for example, you might have started um, yeah. doing the EVP sessions or something like that in your ghost yeah. hunting, did you find that yeah. once you started one thing, it snowballed and led to another thing? Like perhaps you then started doing tarot cards or, or perhaps yes, you I started <laughs> to do... Um, seances yes. or you did this or you did that and it yes. just snowballs and you end up doing all these different things absolutely yes i yeah. did i started using dowsing rods after um you know i started i was doing just the evps at first passive evps i would just lay down a recorder and ask questions and i thought that was okay you know i thought well as long as i'm not using a ouija board you know not knowing that it's not yeah. really the tool that you yeah. use, it's the intent and what you're doing with it. You're communicating with these spirits, yes. engaging with them, you know. But after I start, I did that, I started doing, 
I think what it was was we went to the spiritualist camp and we started doing table tippings. That was the seances and the table wow. would rock and, and stuff like that. It was all, it was crazy. Cause I, we would get, and it was weird because people say, well, you know, how was this table communicating you by doing this, you know, but what it was, it was almost like a psychic type of thing. It was like, you would, you would ask, you would be led men, you know, like it would come to your mind right. and then you would ask, are you the spirit of blah, blah, blah? And it would say yes. And then, you know, right. it would keep answering and, us. And so does it, yeah. does it answer by tipping the table or how does that work? Yes. Okay. Uh, what we would do at first, everybody always had to join hands mm -hmm. and they all had to be in agreement. And I think that's huge. I really do. I really think there's something oh, yeah. to that. Yeah. That these spirits, they have to have agreement, you know, with everybody that's there that, to that's the invitation. experience something. Yes. Yes. That's, that's exactly. opening the door. Yes. And we would sing songs to appease the spirits. We would also, I mean, silly songs like row, row, row your boat. Ah. We would always try to, we would try, we would try to sing to sound joyful. We were trying to attract the spirits and all this stuff, you know. And sure enough, we would start getting the wrappings and the knocks. And then we start, that's when we started asking the questions, you know, we would say, um, knock once if for yes or knock twice. And it would do it. You know, you would hear it. And then uh, sometimes, sometimes the table wouldn't rock, but there was times that it rocked so much that it literally would stand up and sit on your lap. And I mean, when that happened, it was, I, you know, any other time I would have ran out of there. Cause that was really creepy, <laughs> you know, but, and, 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 and actually the one that did that, it actually was warning us that one of the team members mother was going to die. Oh, that's... and it said that she was going to die within a year. And guess what? She died like six months later. And I just, after now looking back, that was the devil's prophecy. And we were all in agreement. I mean, I, that's the way I see it. Not mm -hmm. saying that it was it was her fault, you know. God bless this girl, you know. Uh, I'm sure that afterwards she, you know, I don't know, I don't know. I'm just, yeah. But I certainly felt bad after that, and I was like, oh my gosh, you know. I hope that's not. I mean, it hit my mind, you know. Is well, that because what we did, you know? It, and, it just goes oh. to show nothing good comes of it. There's nothing good yeah. that comes of anything of that no. stuff. And no, I've right. said to uh, people before, I know people who practiced Reiki um, who were doing yeah. healings for people, but the people themselves yeah. were so sick themselves. I thought, hey, oh, man, yes, this yes. doesn't make sense. Yes, <laughs> Nothing yes, good yes, comes of right. it. Yeah. Yes, you're right. You're right. And I noticed a lot of the people that was into the, you know, the ghost hunting and stuff, they a lot of them would end up having problems right you know like either wise a lot of serious like health problems mm -hmm. marital problems mm -hmm. drug problems of course it was just like a lot of drama you know it was and, and can end up in a full something. spiritual yeah. battle i mean that's what yeah. happened to me and that's what yeah. led me to christ because i i i called yes yes when i was so desperate and he yes, came amen. through yeah yes yeah. amen yes amen and it's it's something how everything turned around with us because like i said at first i thought oh i need to go to the spirits to get these answers because mm -hmm. the bible had errors you know but then after everything it got really bad you know at the end there yeah i was like wow what is the bible true you know i mean i started, yeah. yeah i actually um one of the things that really helped me was Laura, was Laura Maxwell's testimony. It really was. I, yes. I heard her testimony. I was on YouTube looking at people, you know, what I was looking up what to do, you know, about, you know, these spirits in your home and mm. how to cleanse them. And, you know, and then I was listening on, uh, I, had, I was on Facebook. I was listening to deliverance ministers, you know, and I was hearing them talk about the Bible verses mm. and stuff like that. And, um, it made me think and they were doing deliverance and stuff. So I was like, wow. Okay. But when I started uh, questioning that, you know, like, you know, it, it was like the devil didn't want me to hear that. He, he was getting angry. 
Oh, yeah. stuff started really happening, you yes. know. It was stuff picking up then. And uh it was it was really something mm-hmm. else. It really really was. And um I I just I uh, I don't even know where to go next. Yeah. <laughs> I'll uh, let you just ask the question. <laughs> I I do want to tell the viewers because this this is a ministry yeah. and people people often say we yes. spend too much time dealing with the devil. And I right. want to tell the viewers I don't like doing these um, testimonies to hear all of this, but I really want to bring it home to people. The reason I do it, the reason you do it, Dana, I'm sure is in agreement with me here is that because we have seen the, the, the incredible darkness when you dabble in that kind of stuff. And we do this in the hope to make people aware and to bring it to their attention, not to do this anymore. And yes, the hope yes. that Jesus can bring to a person's life and that Jesus is the truth. And that's the reason I do these because um, I want to give God all the praise. All the glory. Yes. yes Jesus yes. is our salvation. He's come to bring us, um, to give us salvation, but we need to yes. accept him. We have free will and we need to make that choice. But by sharing yes. these testimonies with people, um, we do have to talk about those things we've been through in the past to make people see that they, you know, the people that are in new age, the people that are in a cult to make them see that, um, to recognize, Oh, that's what I'm doing. That's, that's what I thought. That's, you know, so that they do come to know the truth. And so that's why we do it. And, and you can agree. That's why we do it. We share our testimony to bring people to the truth that Jesus is the truth. The Bible is the truth. And that's what we're about. Yes. That's right. That's right. And, and just me hearing you, mm. you know, I'm like, wow. Cause I resonate yeah. with that, you know, yeah. what you went through. And, uh, and I hope that when people hear this, if they're in the occult and these things are happening to test these spirits, you know, ask them tell them you know just cast them out in the name of jesus and mm. see what happens yeah they will go they yeah. will go every time every time and also, they might not they might come back but that's for reasons you know yeah and also yeah. um we are doing this job we have taken this role on board for us because quite often yeah. the churches aren't doing enough the churches aren't right. telling the congregation um not to do these things um like you were at church and you were practicing witchcraft and they either weren't aware or or they just didn't think it was i think churches tend to think that whoever comes through the door is a good christian is is a solid christian but that's not the case people come for many reasons people come because they're in trouble people come because they're in new age and they're, they're they're looking for hope and answers and 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 the churches need to talk more about spiritual warfare and talk more about, yes. um, you know, the demonic side and how it can lure people. And I think if um, they did that, then we wouldn't be seeing half of this. And we've got a lot of church yes. practicing, for God's sake, uh, Christian yoga or Christian this and Christian yes. that. Oh. And they're doing um, right. angel uh they're, they're actually tarot cards, but they've got a, a Christ yes. uh, title to it, and it's not Christian, mm-hmm. and it shouldn't be done because these are open yes, doors for right. the demonic. I did those. That's the ones I had. Right. <laughs> it was like the angel ones. We even had an angel board. You know, it was just like a Ouija board, but, but it, was it was like angels on there. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was like, I mean, it was just like if you put the label of Jesus on it, you know, it, people think it's okay, but it's not okay. You cannot you know, make something yeah. holy that God abhors, you know, that it just don't happen. That's yeah. just like whenever we would go on an investigation or leave an investigation, we would always do these protection prayers. And we were leaving God's umbrella of protection every time we did those things. You know, mm. we're sitting there communicating with the dead. We're sitting there talking, we're well, talking to demons, but we think we're talking to the dead, you know, and, um, and stuff like that. But and people think, well, you know, that when they do that, that they're leaving the spirits there, that the spirits don't follow them home. But that's not true. Yeah, you've already you get a few hitchhikers. <laughs> yes, 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 ma'am. 
Yeah, yeah they always do. They always do. Gosh. Mm. Wow. Well, um, how did you find Jesus after all of this? What made you start to really understand what was the key thing that brought you to Jesus? Well, I'm sure Actually, it was a process. It was, the, it was the, it was, yeah, it was. It really was. Yeah. It was what you was talking about before with the red flags, mm. these red flags. It was making me see, it was planting seeds. Mm. And it was making me think, you know, well, hmm. it just things didn't add up. And we right. knew as investigators, and, and, and you can see it in almost any ghost hunting manual, they always talk about there's well they they uh, categorize different spirits as like poltergeist haunts, residual haunts, right. mm. intelligent haunts, and then demonic. You know, demonic's always in there, but mm. then they say, well, the demonic will mimic the dead. See, but they don't realize that's the problem. They don't realize that these this demonic is always, you know what I mean, yes. mimicking the dead. Yeah. or aliens for that matter right. you know yes but they are always mimicking these things and it's just i kept seeing that and i was like you know things weren't adding up mm. i did an investigation it was uh it was an it was an eye opener and it was up in palm bay florida and it was uh we went what happened was there was a guy there and he he got thrown into the wall and it happened more than once so he got hurt he it hurt his back Oh. And so he went to the hospital and he told the hospital what happened. Well, the hospital, the doctor put him in circles of care, which is a mental health evaluation, you know, a mental health okay. um, yep. you know, institution. And so they put him in there for re um, evaluation and uh, observation. So he talked to a nurse there and the nurse there believed him. And she knew one of our team members that we work with. It wasn't our, on our team, but another team that we worked with. Yeah. And um, she had a lot of cases, so she called us. So uh, we went over there that night. A couple of us went over there and did some uh, EVP stuff, you know, talking, doing a preliminary investigation, talking to people, interviewing them and stuff. And this girl that was there and when I say girl she was probably like 17 or mm. you know I don't think she was 18 but she was around 17 and uh she started going into like a trance and she was acting like the spirit of a little girl and she was acting as if uh she was afraid of her father that her father was uh, abusing her and um she even got up and ran and went into the closet and she was acting as if you know she was being attacked and was just hysterical right and then finally she came around and everything well evidently the story was that the girl was killed and he had chased her into the closet and killed her so okay so we thought to ourselves okay now if this is a an, a demonic case or no i'm sorry an uh you know a case that's uh a wicked spirit the man or whatever and we thought that maybe this was the father that was actually doing these attacks, you know, right. and that maybe the little girl was just trapped there or something. So the next week after the guy got out of the institution, um, he, we did the full investigation. We went over there and he was there and actually he left for a while. So that way we could have the whole house, you know, and there was, um, a couple of us there. We, I think we had like maybe one, two, three, four, four or five investigators there and they we had a monitor station outside that was where they watched on the on the cc you know tv camera right. uh, monitor uh -huh. and we had the cameras all through the house you know well then we had a couple things happening that night you know it wasn't nothing major and then the guy showed up and he asked us what happened so far and we was telling him and he says well he says, I tell you what, if you let me go in there, it'll probably show itself. It doesn't like me, you know? And we were like, well, you know, okay. But I mean, we were hesitant because what happened, you know, about him getting thrown and everything. Yeah. And um, so he was like, no, it's okay. You know, well, he, he didn't really live there, but he, he was there like all the time, you know, and all this. He was like best friends with the young girl that, that lived there. 
So, and he was like, maybe I would say probably like 20 years old or something like that. But this guy, he was tall. He was like, oh man, he was like, he was over six foot tall. I mean, he was like really tall. But, um, so he was a big fella, you know. So, excuse me, he went in there with us and it was a couple of us and I was sitting there filming him with my camcorder. Not him, but my partner that was sitting there doing the Dowsing Rods session. Right. Yeah. And he was asking questions and the Dowsing Rods was giving answers. Well, he started trying to provoke it, you know, um, and which that is stupid, but even doing the Dowsing Rods sessions isn't smart, you know. So anyway, so he was sitting there asking questions and everything. Well, then he, he's like, well, you're afraid of Dawn, aren't you? And this thing was like saying no. And then, because it would, it would, the dowsing rods would swing open for no, and it would come in for yes. We would always have to establish our fir first, our yeses and our noes, right. whatever the spirit would do, you know. So, um, anyway, so it started. So you saying he was, he was provoking it? So you were saying it's their choice what they establish as yes or no? Yes. Isn't that yes. funny it that, be that, different. that yeah. you give them the upper hand in that? Yes, like yes, you're more right. power. Yes, because mm. that's the first thing we would do was we, we would hold the dowsing rods and we'd say, okay, what is your yes? And mm. it would do it. Right. And then we'd say, what is your no? And sure enough, it would be the opposite, you know? Okay. So, um, and so it would say no. And then he was like, well, why don't you come out so I can kick your, I mean, he was Oof. being very provocative, uh, provocative. Yeah. Mm. So when he did that, uh, he said something about, so you are afraid of him. Well, the thing come back and it started to swing back like this. And it was just all of a sudden you would hear, yeah, we heard this loud bang, you know, it was so loud and powerful. We thought that like a car hit the outside of the house or something. Wow. We didn't know what it was. Right. We didn't know what it was. Cause all I knew, I mean, I'm sitting there with my camcorder. Yes. But it was, you know how, like with infrared, you don't see like the whole room. It doesn't light up the whole room. Mm. It just lights up what you're aiming it at. Okay. So I'm sitting there looking at the dowsing rod session and he's over next to him. Well, he's facing us. And when, after this thing happened and, you know, I went over and I turned the light on to see what happened. He was literally turned the other way and he was like up against the wall on the ground like this. And he was in caddy corner with a file cabinet that was sitting up against the wall. So he was like in the center of it there. And there was a dent in the, in the filing cabinet where he hit his head. And next thing you know, we thought he was unconscious. And then next thing you know, he just started crying. And he got and he just, you know, we were yelling for the other people to come in uh, for, to help. And they came in a few seconds. It took a little bit of time and we couldn't mm. figure out why. Well, she, they come in and the grandmother was in there and one of them said, whatever it was, it just threw grandma off the porch. <gasps> so it literally threw him in the wall and threw the grandmother off the porch. And I, we didn't even catch on to that at the time. It literally, our mind was just on him because, you know, this just happened and we were in shock and we didn't really hear her say that. Mm -hmm. But on the video, you can hear it. You know, you can hear them say that. And I was like, oh man, I didn't even, I didn't even catch on to that. You know, that was terrible. I mean, I just, we, we couldn't believe it. But what happened was, believe it or not, we stayed. Even after he was attacked and that happened, they took oh. him out of the room. I know, I know. <laughs> well, see, the thing was, and I know this sounds so stupid. It is stupid, but not smart. <laughs> I guess I should say, but was that, you know, you want to be the brave one. You know what I mean? It, it, when you're in doing that, you know, everybody's put, like, oh, I'm, I want to go in the darkest house. Put it know, this it's way. Stupid. It's a strong delusion. It's, it's yes. strong. <laughs> yes. Right. yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, ma'am, it is. So yeah. the girl came in and she was upset at us. She said, I told you you didn't need to come in here. And you can see it. You can hear her on the video. And she was mad at us and everything. Well, then we got her calmed down and everything. And then she said we, she wanted to stay in the room because there was a couple of us was going to stay. And the other guy asked me, he said, Dana, are you going to stay? And I'm like, well, I guess. I mean, I'm holding the camera, you know. So I just stayed. And my daughter, and she was like, Mom, I'm going to stay in here. And I'm like, you need to go out there. I don't want you in here. Go. And she's like, Mom, I don't want to go out there. I want to be with you. So she stayed with me. 
Mm. So we're sitting there and okay, then the girl started, she wanted to stay in the room with us. So of course the lights were back off again and everything. Well, the girl, she started to go into the trance again. And I'm telling you, her eyes turned black. So help me. They turned black. <sighs> and she was sitting there and she said that she was um, the spirit. I think, I think the name, I don't remember if it was, her name was Amanda or the spirit's name was Amanda. One of them was Amanda, but I think the spirit. And she was saying that it, the spirit, Amanda, she was the one that did it. And I'm thinking, this is a spirit of a little girl. Mm. She did that. There's no way. There's no way physically, you know, even if it was a physical thing, you know, uh, that a child could do that. Mm. You know, if you see, if you, if you, if you seen and, and heard the power and that, I mean, it's like, bam, you know, yeah. Well, I mean, it sounded like a gunshot almost. It was so powerful, it's, you know. It's a major red flag because things just don't add up. Yes, yes, that's what it was. Things just were not adding up. And then we kept hearing, what we did was we had what they call blog star shows. It was like a format, kind mm -hmm. of like this, but it was on a, on a website called Blogstar. Well, I, I used to have shows on there and I started, have, I started getting curious about this. So I started, I had one show one time, it was called Religion and the Paranormal. And I got people, it, it attracted a lot of people. They all came on there, you know, and as soon as I started saying that I thought that maybe they were all demons, they started getting angry at me. Mm. I mean, the, it was like a hostile thing. I mean, right. I even, a lot of them even started shying away from me. You know, it was like, no, that ain't true. Why, you know, that, you know, and they started talking about, uh, you know, you, you believe in a God, how can you believe in a God that, da, 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 you know, and this, they had a problem this, with God this, is what it this was, is, you know, this some is of them. my story, a repeat of my story. Once yeah. I finally understood and knew the truth and I was coming yeah. out of new age, I told a few Facebook friends, you know, where I was and what was happening and they just turned on me. And I saw this ugliness in the people that I'd never seen yes, before. Yes, we, the Isn't people, it weird? The people that I called my friends, that they became ugly. In a and sense didn't you notice of, then that it was like spiritual? Didn't you realize? Oh, absolutely. It, it was like hitting me. Oh, my gosh, this is spiritual. Yes. These people are, they, they're being controlled. I mean, it was just. It was so mind blowing, and it was eye opening, though. Absolutely. You know, that that was one of the major red flags right there was how the people were reacting when I would say that I thought they were all demonic, mm. you know, and how they would they would mock that. Oh, you you think everything's demonic, you know, you know, you think it's demons under every rock, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And um, I just, and that's when I thought, oh, I better start looking at the Bible about this, you know, because these spirits are lying to me, you yeah, know, so now I'm going back to the Bible. <laughs> yeah. And it's easy to, to know if it's not in line with God, it's in the demonic yeah. realm because there's only yeah. two kingdoms, the kingdom yes. of God and the demonic kingdom, the kingdom of Satan. Yes, and people tend to think that demons have red faces and horns and pitchforks and it's right, not like that right. at all they That's can look right. like you or you or me yeah. or or you know they can present in a way that looks like like you said a little girl a spirit yes. of a little girl who needs yes. help who's That's right something That's right that's right yeah. and you know what i was also noticing uh, cuz we had a lot of we also had reports of people that were thinking they were being uh, visited by the aliens, you know, and uh, I mean, some of them thought that they were like being watched by them all the time and mm. paranoid and, you know, was deathly afraid, you know, and stuff. And, uh, but you know, what I was realizing was the things that they were saying was happening with them was very similar to what was happening to people that thought that they were being haunted by ghosts. You know, these spirits, number one, they would affect people not only physically during the day, but also in their dreams. Right. And I'm thinking, you know, and it was this, 
uh, uh, what do they call sleep paralysis stuff, mm -hmm. you know, where they're feeling like there be things are happening to them while they're half asleep or awake, and you know what I mean. And they think yeah. it, it's like an in between uh, state. And I noticed some other similarities between the aliens and the ghosts were that they took pleasure in sexually tormenting their victims. Oh, yes. You know, because we did have people, not only did, did I have reports of the cases that I, you know, um, investigated, but at home, my husband started getting, you know, oh, attacked. Right. And he, it was a woman would come in his dreams and it would, he said it was just like it was real. And it mm. was a redheaded woman and she was very um, seducing mm. and you know, and everything. And, uh, he said that, uh, it ended up turning bad. It just ended up turning ugly. It was started, it started, uh, showing itself, you know, yeah. and next thing you know, he would, we would feel something literally come in the room and it would be like, it really would be like, uh, like we would feel something and I would look and honestly, I, and I've heard it be said and it's so true. And I'm sure you know this, you've probably experienced it. But it's like the room was darker than the dark. You know what I mean? It was yeah. like so dark. It was like black. You couldn't even see. Mm -hmm. I mean, even when it's dark, you can kind of see a little around, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, it was just so dark. And it was, it was just that feeling would come over us. And we would feel, literally feel something like bump the bed, you know. And we were like, oh, no. And then we would be like, you know, me, me or him or both of us would sometimes would get out of here in the name of Jesus. We would just start saying it. It just, it just kind of like yeah. come natural, you know? Mm. And, uh, and at the first, like I said before, with my grandfather, I didn't even think to do that. I just thought it was grandpa, you know? And, uh, even being in church, I never had thought of it before, but I learned, you know, by hearing these other people, you know, these cases I had was like, they would say that they said in the name of Jesus, that it would stop. And so I was like, Oh, okay. You know, so I, I learned that. And that was one of the things too, that made me, made me, uh, you know, when I started questioning, well, well, maybe they are all demons because whenever you say, believe in the name of Jesus, say go, yeah. you know, it's like, that's yeah. just, it was just, that was another red flag, you know? Yeah. You know, but, uh, and then, and then also, let's see, what else was it? It was another thing that was with the similarities. Oh yes. Yes. Um, we had cases like where somebody would literally feel like something would pull them out of the bed and oh, lift yes. them up mm. and lift yes. them up. And suddenly <laughs> they would be dropped and they would yes. wake them up. And mm -hmm. like, you know, I've heard, and I, and maybe it was you that mentioned it before, but I resonated with it because I had cases that, you know, I heard this yeah. where they would literally feel their self hit the bed. Yeah. You that, know? that was me. And, and yes, yes. And, yes. and my husband's had that too. It's like, you're, you're fully asleep, yes. but mm. you all of a sudden feel like you're dropped onto the mattress and the mattress mm. actually like bounces. So, you know, it's yes. not just a, a jolt that yes. you do in your sleep. You know, you're coming from a certain height and you just, bounce on the bed and yes. you wake up you know you can't do that yourself no, no. and you know that's something yeah. that's like that's something happened and you have that. that sensation sort of in your stomach like you know yes yeah that, that's yes. happened a few mm. times of course never happened since i've become a christian a born-again christian it's never yeah. happened um wow praise wow. god that yeah. says a lot doesn't it oh yeah it does yeah and you know i've never had and that, that was another thing I never had a case where it was born again Christians. Never, mm. never. It was people that, yeah, I believe in Jesus, you know, but they still, they had, you knew they weren't true, you know, like Jesus followers. Yeah. They said they believed in Jesus. That was the way I was too. I believed in Jesus, but I wasn't a Jesus follower. Right. And I didn't, I didn't care to please him. I just thought, well, he came and died for me and that's all that needs to be done. I'm good. You know, that was the way I thought. Yeah. And I actually kind of think that's, a, that was pretty much the way my church taught too, Yeah. you know, well, because they were always saying, well, we're all sinners, you know, and that's just, you don't, yeah. you know, that I understand we're all sinners, but at some point we try to do right. <laughs> you know, we want yeah. to please the Lord, you know, 
I never opened that Bible and that's where I went wrong. Because if you open that Bible and start reading the truth, you absolutely, Amen. he Amen. moves you and, and shifts you. He changes and transforms you to understand the truth. And without yes. that, you don't know the truth. And so a lot of people think they're Christian, but they're not yeah. a true born again believer Christian. I was one of those. Um, and Me when too. I finally did come to Christ in the way that he wants us to by um, following his commandments and, and, you know, following him and doing everything and get rid of everything that we shouldn't be doing and doing all those yeah. things and praying constantly and, you know, everything that yeah. we should, then everything changes. And, you know, you get that aha uh -huh moment yeah. where you go, oh, okay, now I understand. I truly yes. understand. And it's that. Yes. It's like a spirit, a supernatural component. Amen. That you're, so you're truly, you. genuinely seeking the truth. Yeah, and you can't you're really explain that it to truth. people because yeah, they yep. people tried to explain it to me, obviously, but I didn't understand. But um, yeah, well, Dana, we've got so many things to talk about, so much more that I just want to hear, and I'm really interested in what what happens with the deliverance we're going to um call it a day for this show thank you so much for joining me and we're going to thank come you. back with you dana and continue on with part two and okay. you can tell us everything how you were led to jesus about your deliverance and i really look forward to that show so come back and talk thank to you. us soon okay thank bye. you it was, it was an honor thank you thank bye -bye. you bye